What's up riders, old man Ronan here and welcome back to the channel. Yeah, we're on the one that got away. What does that mean? Stay tuned. You know, uh, when I was looking to uh, do the Transamerica Trail all before COVID and everything else, I had I had a couple thoughts in my head and longtime channel uh, watchers will know that my first thing I was going to do since I've been riding Harley Davidson since uh, I was 14 years old was to take a, a Sportster and turn it into a Scrambler and then take it on the Transamerica Trail which is a coast to coast trail here in the US that uh, is uh, um, probably 30% off-road, or uh, on-road, 70% uh, off-road, and uh, it's pretty aggressive, particularly in the western part of the United States. Well, I thought that was going to be an idea until I realized that the uh, the Sportster wasn't really built for that, even if you make a scrambler out of it. <laughs> then I decided to look at other motorcycles, and of course the Himalayan came to mind, uh, watching YouTube channels and saying, man, this thing can go anywhere. I mean, uh, you watched a couple of the YouTubers out there, they'd go all over uh, Asia and all over India and all over the world without any issues whatsoever. And I looked at that real heavy, but the first one that came to mind, to be honest with you, was this bike right here, a KLR. And of course it would have been a used one and it would have been generation one. So what we're on right now is the 2022 KLR 650. And I'll tell you what, uh, this is a, a remarkable machine. And like I said, I was really looking to get this uh, bike uh, before I decided on the Himalayan. And uh, we're gonna give you a, a kind of a first ride because I've never ridden a new one. The only ones I've ever ridden have been the generation one. And uh, this is generation three. So. Uh, it, it feels a little different to what I was used to. However, I think this is going to be a fun video. Nah, it stops really nice. Taller, obviously, than the Himalayan, but I do ha I do like the fact that it has a nice flat seat. And I think that's the, uh, the, the biggest thing I can say right now as my first impression on this bike is the fact that I'm sitting, uh, you know, I'm flat footing the bike. Again, I, you know, I've got maybe an inch, not even an inch in between my, uh, my uh, seat and my stuff. <laughs> but I am flat footing it because I have a 34 inch inseam. And so there's no issue whatsoever there wise. But this bike is a true adventure bike, just like the, just like the, uh, the uh, Himalayan. And the first, the, the, how, how do you tell right away? Well, there's a lot of sport tour bikes out there that kind of look like adventure style bikes, but if they don't have uh, wire spokes, they ain't adventure bikes. <laughs> they don't have a big front tire. They ain't adventure bikes. You need to have uh, spokes, baby. Uh, that's that's what makes an adventure bike. Uh, that and you know really low end torque. Let's see. Yeah, we can make it. Yay, we're not gonna die But uh, this bike, you know has that it does really well as far as uh, the as far as handling It does handle really well and, and we're, we're gonna be taking this on the gravel here uh, in the next uh, video or two and uh, Then we're gonna do uh, my basic thoughts, but right away uh this is a big bike uh, compared to the Himalayan. This is a big bike and the handlebars are really wide, I would say, compared to what the Himalayan is. Uh, and again, but it gives you a lot of control. Um, I think this is a, this is gonna be a fun one. Like I said, I've never ridden a generation three. So it's a, a little bit different. Uh, you know, it, it's got some of the, uh, it's got some of the stuff that I'm, it's familiarity, you know, with the headlight and the the, uh, the cowling and everything. It's steady. It doesn't turn with the, the wheel, which is what, uh, exactly like the Himalayan. So it's really similar that way. So I would say that's probably the best uh, comparison if, you know, minus the engine size is the, uh, that this thing has got a lot of uh, similarities to what the Himalayan is. Sounds a lot similar, you know, that industrial sound that the Himalayan has. Same kind of thing. Very, very nimble. But again, that's that big tire in the front. And, uh, you know, perfect time. Let's put the specs up there right now.
Yeah, she's got good acceleration. The seat, the seat, uh, the uh, triangles, really nice. I mean, uh, you know, the, the tank is a little wider right here. Uh, I can feel it in the, uh, the, you know, the outside of my knees right here. And let's show you back down. Right here in my knees, I can, I can feel it uh, against the, where I, the, on the Himalayan, I've got them a little bit tighter. But that's not, a, that's not a deal breaker. I don't think it's a bad feeling. Uh, I can actually sit farther back and I can get tighter. But uh, I like to, I like to grip the tank like this. And in and, and that kind of situation, well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty widespread, if you know what I mean. The tank does come out quite a bit farther. So I'm going to sit comfortably a little bit farther back, say about right here, because that makes my that's where my arms are most comfortable. It gives me that ability to give the uh, ice cream cone cup on the uh, handlebars. <clears throat> nice wide stance. Shifts nice and easy. Clutches uh, clutch pulls really simple. Uh, square, square. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of the uh, urine specimen, you know what I'm saying? No! <laughs> I know. I get so much fun with that. You know, the, the ones that have the clear bottle, you know, it's just like, oh man, this is much more appealing, is it not? Let's see, how are we doing here? Nice and stable. Does drift a little bit more than the Himalayan does. And that could be just me. Now I think it's the uh, weight of the motorcycle. The thing is very top heavy, so that's why she drifts. We'll check some low end torque if we get up the road here, get away from these vehicles. That does feel good though. Like I said, this is the bike that I almost bought, not this newest one. I mean, it would have been probably somewhere in the, oh, 90s era that I would have probably bought the bike or the early 2000s is the latest. Uh, the last time I rode a KLR it was one, of, like I say, the Generation 1. I don't even remember the year it was. But nice low end torque. Controls are simple. It's simple. And I think that's the biggest thing to say. You don't have a lot of, there's no rider modes on it. I like that. The uh, windshield here really is a not factor for me either. It's kind of the same thing as the Himalayan. It's not a factor. But at least I can see through it. I think the seat is like the biggest uh, advantage of this so far over the Himalayan. Uh, I kind of like the wide bars too, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Got a place to put uh, risers on it. We'll see when we get to, to be able to stand up a little bit here down the road. And we'll go around the corner here and we'll hit our hard brake like we always do in this location. And let's see what's going to happen. And the car behind me, I got to make sure. It, oh, yeah. Well, you can definitely tell that it's Kawasaki brakes. <laughs> These things, uh, that's one thing I've always liked about them, you know, uh, is the fact that they do stop exceptionally quick. We'll try our stability up here if we get a chance to. We may not. Hey, I turned off my turn signal. I don't even know if these are self-canceling or not. It looks like we're not going to get a chance to stop. Maybe we will down at the stop sign. After riding the Himalayan for so many years now and jumping on the KLR, I don't see a whole lot of difference as far as uh, power and uh, acceleration, to be honest with you. Uh, so far and it's not a fair comparison to say because this is just my initial thoughts but to be honest with you I, I, I it feels exactly now I, the reason why I can say that with such confidence I just got off of the scram 411 to jump on this bike and so I was comparing the throttle differences and there's not a whole lot of difference to be honest with you I mean I'm only doing 57 50 well 55 right there miles an hour but it's really similar. Good acceleration. We're going to do it the same thing at the bottom of this hill as we did uh, in, a, in a past. Uh, we're going to you know, put her up in the highest gear possible and get down to 25 miles an hour and then throttle her up and see what she does. There's 25 and here we go. She's got a little bit more sputter than what the 411s do. But she accelerates quicker 
when she hits that uh, of course I'm guessing this but the uh, the uh, RPM she does have she does have good power getting up these hills like this so yeah similar but quicker does that make sense and that shows you the difference between the 411 and the uh, the 650 good engine braking coming down this hill then we're gonna do the other test as well too we're gonna quick shift it and see how she feels at the stop sign down here here's down to first gear come to a stop nobody coming yeah she's she sputters pretty good she, her low end torque isn't as strong as what the uh, 411 is but it's still doing it it's still doing it. it's not having it's not having fun I'm not gonna do that to the engine <laughs> it's just not having fun doing that it needs to get up in the higher rpm so uh, as far as that goes I would say meh it doesn't have the uh, the low end low rpm torque that like the Himalayan does or the Scram does in particular the Himalayan because that's what it's going to be a direct comparison to but as far as comfortable man this thing is superior suspension is really nice I'm gonna stand up here and ease of standing I might want a little bit of uh, higher risers for this but as far as it uh, being a uh, an easy bike to stand up and control I think so. I think it, uh, it does a pretty good job. Yeah. It's nice. It's just, like I say, suspension is really good. Shift's nice. Yeah. It's nice. acceleration like I mentioned nice and stable a little bit of vibration both in the very low rpm and in the very high rpm that 55 60 miles an hour uh, range is where she really likes to run and she runs really smooth guess what else likes to do that good question <laughs> guys if you're enjoying these kind of uh, content make sure you comment below I want to hear your opinion uh, have, how many of you ever ridden the KLR and what do you think of them and then also, if you've ridden a KLR, have you ridden a uh, Himalayan as well too? Put that down in the comments below. I'd like to hear from you. You know, the Himalayan and the KLR are very similar. But both of them are real ADV bikes. You know, the other stuff you can throw in there, they, you know, they can go off-road and stuff. But these were built for it. And I, I think the closest relationship of any of the bikes I've ridden over the last couple, three years... Have, this is the closest to the Himalayan, and the Himalayan is the closest to this. They're really, really similar. Both handle exceptionally well. Both are very nimble. Um, th there are some differences. KLR seat is a lot better. The Himalayan's low-end torque is a lot better. And the brakes on the KLR are a lot better. <laughs> but I'm thinking the fuel economy on the Himalayan is a lot better. Oops, so... <laughs> <laughs> Who's been riding heel toe shifters? You're an idiot! <laughs> A lot more acceleration to the top end. A, oh, no question about it. Well, it's good. This guy can get out of my way. Yeah, 
Yeah, she has got some, she does have some power, man. I feel doubt about it. And you know, we're at uh, miles per hour. Well, what's my initial thoughts? I really do like this bike. Again, it is familiar to me as well. It's got, it's got the same simple technology as what the uh, Himalayan has. And as far as something that's gonna be, well, we'll find out how she's gonna perform in the gravel and in the dirt, but that'll be another video. But as far as my initial thoughts on it, I do like the bike, I, do, I like it a lot. It does remind me a lot of the Himalayan, without question. Well, you know what, guys? All in all, this bike is, uh, again, it's familiar, it's simple, it's rugged so far. Uh, got a lot of high-end uh, high uh, uh, RPM power to it. Its power band's a lot higher than the Himalayan would be. But it, as far as the way it performs, it's, if, if the Himalayan was a 600cc engine or better, it would almost be identical. And the only differences would be all the, uh, the extra stuff, you know, the accoutrement, as far as the plastic uh, shields and things like that. Uh, but you know me, I like simple. Well, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell notification button. Share and comment. You know, I read all the comments. And comment on as many as I possibly can. Until next time, guys. Ride safe. And above all, keep her on two wheels, baby.